The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? ready. All right. Tonight's show is going to be sick. Saturday night, I got Tom Gillis in studio. Now, a lot of you guys don't know who he is yet as far as from this show, but we do have a new film that's coming out. It's our Whosoever's Tour. And it's uh, when we went to Idaho, and he's say, actually say, say Idaho again. Idaho, did uh, I say it wrong? No, no, I'm the pimp. The what? <laughs> so oh, <laughs> I get you. Oh, I, this hey, guy, sorry. right here we go. Sorry. So this, okay. So anyway, with that said, <laughs> you're gonna see this guy's personality in the film, but it's not out yet. But it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Quicker to a, than to a streaming yeah. near you, Amen. but. There's a lot to this guy, and I, I basically wanted to bring you in because you know we met through mutual friends, yeah, and um, we just we we're going to talk about the whole story. But basically, we met, we connected. You came on tour. You just resonated with the family. You just felt like you were just one of our tribe of the yeah. Whosoever's movement, and you were, and you are, and the rest is history. And now yeah. here we are in the studio. Rocking. We have an hour to talk about your amazing testimony because. Um, you are a pro snowboarder, yeah, and you've done a lot of incredible things. And I'm gonna let you tell the story, but dude, thank you for being on the show tonight. Ah, thanks for having me. And, and like I said, um, so I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I grew up snowboarding on landfill, like 200 vertical feet. And I just had this passion, right? Like we all have a passion to be the best, and I think yeah. that that's in our hearts. Heck like we yeah, we all want want to win. No one, no one ever goes like, "I'm gonna be fourth in the Olympics," like <laughs> you know, like no one goes, "I'm gonna get fifth place in the marathon." Like it's all about being the best. Yeah, and that was my dream. And I was like, okay, like what does the best do? Watch the movies, watch, read the magazines, studied, and just was gonna go for it. Send it full I, send. I have a question though. Go. Were you like, were you, were you religious? Were you um, a Christian? Yeah, so I got I got atheist? I got raised in a Roman Catholic home, so and what, I was what the heck was that yeah, like? So I don't like, even know anything about so that. Dude, I was an altar boy. Like I had to ring the bell and stuff for the communion, and I used to always think like the priest uh, used to smoke cigarettes. I thought because when you go up there and he does the gifts, he's like, "Lord, wash away my iniquity." But I thought he said nicotine. Nicotine. I thought he was like, <laughs> "Lord, wash away my nicotine." I'm like, "Mom, why does that guy smoke?" Like, anyway, so I was like an altar boy, which really at the end of the day. Uh, that Roman Catholic faith was all about like you sin six days out of the week, and so you could have something to talk about on Sunday. Gotcha, like that gotcha. it was like really yeah. like just kneel, stand, kneel, stand, repent, we're good. So I, there was no relationship. It was all just. Is that different than normal like Catholicism? No, no. It's, I think it's just a, a Romans were just more passionate. <laughs> yeah, I, I never. No, no, no. no it's all the never, same. Roman yeah. Catholic, Catholic. It's yeah. it's all the same. So. Yeah. Well, most of the Catholics I know. The majority of them, uh, it's the same thing. They yeah. just kind of run with the devil all week, and then yeah. come Sunday, Dude, they, they I, I do their remember, thing. Honestly, I remember going to the confessional. Like you, you go and you confess to the priest mm -hmm. and making stuff up because I didn't want him to know like my real sins. Like just yeah. straight up, like, oh yeah, I did this and I did that, and then he would give you like a, a like our fathers and hail marys, and you just throw those up and you're good. It was just kind of this really works based kind of like crazy huh? balance it out, balance the scale. Okay, so with that said, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're gonna unpack this whole thing because there's sure. there's obviously listeners that are Roman Catholic or yeah, Catholic. Absolutely. There's so dude, there's so many Catholics. Yeah. Possible. So with that said, you growing up, now did this ever like you growing up, you had this like religion. Yeah. Or like, you know, yeah, these religion. words that were said from this church. Yeah. But nothing ever penetrated you. Like there was never any kind of like relationship with God that you were trying to do right. It was just more of like motions you were going through. Would for you sure. Say? For sure. Absolutely. You know, there were there there are moments looking back where I felt God but I, I, I didn't think you were supposed to feel God. Like it was yeah. supposed to be, you were supposed to like do this, do that, do this. And then, and then at, at, at the pearly gates, the, the scale was balanced and you got in. Like it was, it was, it was never yeah. like relational and there's no relationship. So you thought for sure you would, you would get to heaven no matter what. Well, yeah. Cause you just, you, you were going through the moves. Oh yeah, because you'd go through, but you weren't even, but you were lying. You weren't even telling <laughs> the right sins. Well, yeah, 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 for sure. Like, like, because, like, uh, yeah. How do you lie anyway? To God? How do you lie about your sin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. But yeah there's religion up. for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Make okay. stuff up. So, like, growing up in school, like, so I want, I want, because there's things yeah. I don't know about you. For sure. So, for like, sure. did you grow up skating? Did oh, you grow yeah, up yeah, like yeah. BMX? Yeah, like, yeah. Dude, like, animal what were you chin. Into? The search for animal chin ruined my life. 
Like, because I remember watching As well. it. Yeah. Sixth grade, that came yep, out. Yep. Bones Brigade. Yep. Search for Animal Chin. Mm -hmm. Like, looking for Banks. Who, who, uh, who was, who was I? Because, you know, we all identify with a skater. I, I was McGill. Oh, you were McGill. I, I was McGill. I, I, had, I was Lance Mountain. Oh, I see that, man. And you got to interview Lance, which is I did. Dude, I didn't tell him, though. No, I, I bet. Was, I was like, I, bet. I, can't I say bet. It right Yeah, now. no, we had, you had kids that were caps. <laughs> you had kids that were Tony. Yeah. No, I was I was Mike McGill all the way. I had the dude, board. No way. And lawn tramps, you know. Just, yeah. Like, I, I love skateboarding, but in, in, in Wisconsin, it gets cold. And it, like, yeah. it, it, like you're, you got nothing else to do. So what we would do, take our trucks off our board mm -hmm. and then put the, uh, the, the tail first and ride down mountain, like, oh, hills. Yeah. Just hills. Skate down yeah, just like for snowboarding for snowing. Yeah, before yeah. and then it was like then we got a snowboard. Then you got you just kept going mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the resort well, did, started you, did you race like bikes or a BMX I mean, or a downhill mountain bike? I, like I crushed my brother's throat trying to jump eight people. Evil Knievel, dude. We yeah. were we were in the yeah, same generation. Course, like we would have been in high school together. So it was yeah. just like Evil Knievel, mm -hmm. Bones Brigade, like yep. all that stuff and everything. California was selling the rest of the world. We were buying it. Like yep. in Wisconsin, it was like oh just be like them, be like them, be like them. Mm -hmm. I mean that was it. So I mean we. Skateboarding, snowboarding, uh, biking, like anything to get out and do. So yeah. was it was it, what was the scene like? Was it like drugs and like alcohol, no. women. Any, no. Well, it's, so when I, was, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it was a different era yeah. before social media and all that. Yeah. So there was it was kind of a time lapse. Like it, it was a different culture. Well, for sure. Than it is now. Like if you're living in L.A., you could go to certain areas in like in the middle of nowhere, and they're they're watching social media. They look like they could be living in L.A. Right, right, right. So there's right. A, there is there was a different yeah. time in time. No, I think I think you, there was drinking and there was there yeah. was smoking cigs and whatnot. But there was nothing like I mean we definitely. But there was nothing like for me. I was so focused. I just all I wanted to do is snowboard. Like yeah. I would I would go to school and like my friends would be like, "What happened to you?" And I was like, right after school, I'd go to the mount like the hill, snowboard, 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 snowboard. Yeah. Go do my work. Go back, s and they were like, "Dude, we didn't." We, for three, four months, I disappeared. I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I was at the hill." If exactly. you want, people would just go to the hill. It's a landfill. It was just out of the town. If so you, you would actually have to hike up. No, 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 they had chairlifts. They had, but, but oh. it was like it was dinky though. I'll, I'll yeah. show you a picture. So you're like, what? It, no was, way. it was like way smaller than like bear or way smaller right. than right. summit. Like just and and that's. But you don't need much. No. Like, and I, what I tell people is too is like. You have a dream, but you dream big dreams. So it doesn't matter where you're at, but you just dream to be the best and do the best and go. Yeah. And so, like, I knew early on that if I was going to be the best, I had to put myself in the best situation. I was the best on my mountain shortly, like, after I got started, like, easily. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I started going to the little contests around Madison and whatnot, and I... They, they would like, dude, that guy goes bigger than anyone else. I'm like, okay, so I got some mojo. And then I went to Midwest Championships and like would try tricks. I'd never even landed before. Like I would be like, oh, I'm going to try a switch nine. And they're like, what? You just throw it just out there. Throw, yeah. yeah. And I'd overshoot the landing and I'd blow up and get back up and just, yeah. 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 It was just like I was going for it. So when, so during this time, you start yeah. progressing, you're in this small town. Yeah. You're progressing in your, in your skills. And then when was it when you kind of got recognized to, to get start get flow. Yeah, well, you, you had you had the. Pe I I remember I sent out pictures, bro. I like took pictures. So did pictures. I took pictures and then <clears throat> we xeroxed them on one sheet. So it was like a big like you know big sheet of paper and I folded it and I sent it out to all these different like Lamar and Nitro and all these different sponsors and just being like, hey, would you guys flow me? Like it was like the the letter like yeah, that's me the up. sponsor me yeah yeah and like the pictures like straight up like. Kodak, yeah, you know? and like nuts. put that together. I still have that sheet. It's <laughs> it's rad. And uh, Lamar picked me up and said, "Here's a free board." And I almost got that tattooed on my body. Like no that's way. like, like I was oh like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, uh, no, thank God it only lasted a year, and I would have had that tattoo forever. So um, yeah, but yeah, I started getting flow here, flow there, and then I was like, okay, next step, next step, let's go big. And so I told everyone. Um, my parents were like okay but they wanted me to go to college mm -hmm. so i went to one year and that didn't work out that well i got my education <clears throat> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> i just, and i came home and i told him i i have to go snowboarding i have to at least try yeah. like school and i made it like to become pro yeah le like i gotta at least go and try if not i'll come back to college college will be here right but i gotta go and so where'd you go i drove my truck from milwaukee wisconsin to lake tahoe you know, you know, any <coughs> stories I've heard like this, not, not just snowboarding. Yeah. It's like snowboarding, skateboarding, surfing, uh, yeah. uh, uh it, it, dirt biking, yeah. Ronnie Feist packs up his stuff, drives across America. Yeah. I had like 10 bucks to my name and yeah. like, everyone just heads to the West. Yeah. 
to find. Well, you got to go to the arena. Exactly. If you're going to fight, you got to go to the arena. That's what I love about the story. I just love these success stories. (laughs) Yeah. So you pack up. Packed up. You drive. Drive. And I knew someone, my, my, the guy that I like was my big supporter back there, got a job with Arnett sunglasses and he was their team manager. He's like, he knew a guy that knew a guy that knew a guy that had a, had a couch. I slept on his couch for two weeks and uh, it snowed within two weeks of me being in Tahoe and jumped in someone's car, barely knew him. And we went up to Mount Rose. It snowed three feet, and it was the most snow I ever saw. So I just sent it. I was, like, jumping off everything. Like, couldn't believe it. I mean, Midwest, you get six inches of snow. You're like, I'm going to land on my head. I can't hurt myself. Now we got three feet. Yeah. Like, it's on. Yeah. And um, these guys were building this kicker, and they were filming. And I just walked up to them. I said, hey, when you're done, can I hit it? And they're like, yeah, we're done. The light's flat. Like, it's over. Landing's bombed out. I'm like, okay. So I went up, just sent it, like way past the landing. I mean, I'm like, and stomped it. Big old front side Etcho Sketch 3, stomped it. And they're like, are you going to do that again? I'm like, uh-huh. So and they had cameras and everything. Oh, dude, they pulled them all out. No. Like, like I'm talking the film cameras, right? So wait, the what, Ars, were, they, what yeah. were they doing down the... They, down they were just up there filming another guy, and they were just like, oh, and I just had the audacity to walk them and say, hey, let me try yeah. And then all of a sudden, so clearly the trick you were doing was way better than the first one. So, yeah. yeah, like they, so they're like, let's get this. Uh, yeah, so oh, it, it, that that first day, this so is how you get discovered, people. Exactly. Go for it. <laughs> Send it. Um, no, seriously. So the the first day on the mountain, I got photos in the magazines. I and, and that connection that was Rich Van Every. He was filming with Standard Films. He told me I should hang out. And normally at that time, I didn't even know. Like you know, starting yeah. something new, you don't know nothing. Yeah. So you're like, okay, yeah, great. And and that's what I'm here. And Rich like was like, oh well, normally your sponsors have to pay. And I'm like, I don't have any. <laughs> like, like, and they're like, pay for what for the, oh, for, for the to film with them and all that oh, stuff yeah, with, yeah. With, with standard films yeah. and the hatchets yeah, right. and stuff. And they're yeah. like, but you know, you just tag along. You just tag along. And so I was like, coattails. I'm riding. Yeah, right on. And so end of that year, I got a cameo in the biggest snowboard movie of the year, TB5. And everyone's like, why isn't this guy sponsored? Who is this guy? Like, I w- you know, came out of nowhere. So like, I got a question. For go. You. Roll. It, with all this said, here you are, Roman Catholic guy. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you, how's like your mind, how are you dealing with this stuff? Like, is there any lack for God in your life? No. You care less? You're no. basically just, you're, you're having a time yeah, like, in your like, life? I, I would say like, I, my, I had a single focus. I was going to be the best snowboard in the world. Okay. And I was going to be famous and yeah. whatever that looked like. So, what that, yeah. so technically what that looks like spiritually is your God. Yes, exactly. Was fame and fortune. Yeah, yeah. And um, to become... Famous and rich. I, I, I was bowing down at the, at, at the idol of myself. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, and that's so relatable to so many people because yeah. it's not that you have to be a pro snowboarder or anything like that. You just want to be super successful in your job. You put everything in front of it, and that's your God, whatever yeah. that is to, yeah. to anybody. So it's so relatable. Yeah, and it was like more, more, more. And, yeah. and, and, and it's funny because I, as I got that video part, as I got those sponsors, as I got like more, right, like yeah. all, everything that you ever wanted, yeah. you go, why am I not happy? Yeah. Yeah. And then you go, oh, I just need more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah more. Like, oh, just if, if if I just and it would, I would play mad scientist. I'd mm-hmm. be like, oh, if I had better sponsors. Oh, if I had that girlfriend. Oh, if I could travel there. Oh, if or I if you got that, that trick. Uh, oh, or, uh, yeah. yeah, and you just keep, you know, oh, if yeah. I get this, it's, that's that emptiness. It's that, the more, yeah. Everyone's trying to fill that void. The emptiness, the more. Isn't that crazy, dude? And then we all we all will like get to the end of ourselves. Okay, so yeah. so now things are cooking. You're getting you're you're fully like. Sp- your sponsor traveling the, point, the world, traveling yeah. the world. You're, yeah. you're, you know, the way the skate and the snowboard industry and surf and all these industries and FMX, it looks so big worldwide because yeah. it is big. It's worldwide, but yet the circles are so small and everyone knows everyone. Way small. So you're basically in the mix with everybody at this point. Yep. Yeah. Um, f- photographers, filmers, uh, uh, ath- you know, pro yep. snowboarders, company owners, etc. Women, drugs, all that stuff is around. Sex, yeah. drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah. Um, what? Where? Where'd you go from here? Well, again, was there any crazy things that happened in your life? That, I, I, like, it, I think it was all access. And I was so, um, you know, again, as I was saying, you get more. I remember like when I moved out to California, I said no drugs, no sex. Like I was like, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be super hyper focused. Non Christian. Yeah. Saying no sex, no drugs. Well, I just knew it was going to distract me. I just, yeah, I was, yeah. I was hyper focused in that yeah. juncture. But the first time I got to the guy's house that I didn't even know, he had a bong hit set for me. And of course, and I there just, it was. <laughs> well, yeah, because you, you start with you start with some 
some plans. Yeah. And yeah. then, but, but see, Satan's the king of distraction. Yeah, absolutely. He yeah. wants to come in and he studies you. Yeah. And he knows what will take you out and get you off focus. Yeah. Yeah. So I had my friends, Jeremy Jones and the TGR guys. Jeremy they, Jones. Yeah. He called, they called me up. That's the big mountain guy, not the street guy. That oh. different. There's two oh, different because okay, okay. you wouldn't known the street guy. Okay. Jeremy got Jones, it, but got it. the big, well, they, TGR, they were doing this huge, uh, TV show, Adrenaline X, NBC, all this stuff, and they 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 included me, and they were gonna try to figure out who the best snowboarder is in the world, mm -hmm. and then this is where I do the bomb drop, and ultimately like they're filming me, and we're doing. Well, all yeah, this tell, stuff. tell everyone about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the bomb drop, basically, the, the best snowboard trick in the world, or best snowboarder in the world, and they're gonna do this on TV, and so they do all these stupid, you know, uh, stunts to see who the best snowboarder is mm -hmm. in the world, and then ultimately it's Travis Rice and myself at the end, like. Mm -hmm. it, he, I made it through. He made it through, and they put a crane on top of a quarter pipe, and they just okay. How tall is a quarter? Quarter, quarter pipe is twenty six feet. Okay, and it just just under vert, but just like almost there. And then they put a crane on top of it. How many feet? Well, the crane is maxes out at forty. Okay, so and the idea is whoever goes the highest wins and all that stuff. So this this was I'm six months out of knee surgery. Um, I just had the bad boy replaced and I'm just like trying it out. And I'm, so all this stuff is happening to me. I'm like been doing the whole thing, the tour, right? You know, the tour right, right. for like, now I'm like seven years in and I'm like, okay, snowboard, this is going to be the biggest thing I ever did. And but going, but yeah. going back to your knee surgery, cause yeah. I've had knee surgery and you tore your way ACL. I, uh, yeah, ACL, I had 70% of my lateral meniscus removed and six stitches in my medial. So basically your knee is it's jelly filled it's exactly <laughs> jelly filled zero strength yeah yeah and you're you're about to, you're work you're, you're in a contest which is crazy because you didn't even do the right right rehab to restrength and everything well I, I was six months out so i was kind of i was i was strong but, but to jump to jump down yeah, what no. you're trying to jump no, down it was dumb it was stupid <laughs> it, I, i've never been accused of being smart <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're in it. They're they're like crank it. Yeah, so I go first, ten feet. Travis goes at ten feet. I'll, I'll, we're getting the gist of it, and you know, there's wind. It's night, lights in your face, Hollywood, right? Like right. they're all amping it up. And anyways, twenty, twenty, thirty, thirty, all, thirty was the world record. Travis held it. So seven, so seventeen plus thirty feet. Uh, twenty six plus plus thirty plus yeah. thirty. Yeah. So, uh, hit that. Travis dropping in. So dropping just, in. just so people understand, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're on a crane yeah. and you're jumping the off yeah. the crane 30 feet into the quarter pipe. Yeah, exactly. Into a 26 foot quarter pipe. Yeah. And, and there's a thousand people screaming and drinking and hoping that you die. Right. So they can say, dude. And then with, and when there's wind, you know, just like the slightest oh. bit of wind could push dude, they you had, off. They had, they had hacky sacks. They had these little hacky sacks that we would drop into the tranny to kind of gauge the wind and like oh try my like gosh. And every single one of them would get picked up by the wind and blown onto that the is deck. so gnarly. Yeah. So I hit it at 30. Travis eats it at 30. And the producers come back and say, hey, okay, Tom, if you get back up and do 32, you win the kit and caboodle, like all the money. Well, it's the a world record. Yeah, world record, right? And uh, so I was feeling it. Like, and I, you know, you've been there. You're cocky and you're just like, yeah, let's go. And I, I told him, max out the crane. Because mm -hmm. I just was like, I'm feeling it. And I'm like, let's just do it one and for all, one and done. And so I get up on the crane. I'm 40 feet now above a 26 foot quarter pipe. I'm 66 feet in the air. I'm staring at a six story building. And uh, I'm like, what did I do? Like, I'm like so freaked out. I mean, it has to look super small from up top <laughs> looking down. I it mean. looks stupid and you wish you weren't there. Like yeah. honestly, yeah. and um, heart rate monitor on us and uh, blinding in our eyes, Mike, you know, and they're trying to get me to talk and I don't want to talk to anyone. And I do, but this is the trippy thing. So even though Re Roman Catholic kind of pushed that away, worship myself in that moment, when yeah. it's all going down, like, and you're scared, mm -hmm. like, you don't know if you're going to make it, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I don't want to be hurt again. And see, but that's <laughs> interesting, though, because, see, I didn't know, when, since I've known you, I didn't know that you had that Roman Catholic background. Right. But that was that God. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the Word of God says in Psalms, says, the Word of God never comes back void. Yeah, yeah. Now, maybe you were lied about your sins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, or maybe I wasn't even a good yeah. altar boy. You weren't you yeah. were even a good um, uh, Roman Catholic. Yeah. Um, you couldn't even like confess your sins correctly, yeah. but, uh, which I've never even heard of that before, but, oh, you should, we should go after this, <laughs> but, um, but just what, just being in that around that, yeah. that had that influence in your life yeah. to where now here you are, you're what? 20 something years yeah, old, 27, you're on, yeah. you're, you're about, you're looking down like you could possibly die and just destroy your knees. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you call to God. Well, yeah. It, and cause the, the consequences of hitting the deck from 40 feet up going to hit flat, like ice, icy hard flat you know it was yeah, 12 oh, it was 12 below 
they had this little mat on top of the thing. You're like, oh, your cushion, uh, you know. Ice. But you're done. Yeah. You're done. And if you don't, if you go out too far, you're done. Everything. The wind is done. blows you out. You're done. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. And game over, right? And so right. I knew that. And so in that moment, I remember saying, Lord, I don't want to be hurt. Yeah. That that was like that was all he needed was that much, like mm -hmm. just that much. So I ended up, um, I stomp it. I like drop it and stomp it and like everyone freaks out like no one could believe it in fact the craziness of that night is that I had so much adrenaline going through my body I drank a whole handle of Jack that night I didn't get drunk it that was be, it, it was like I, I was partying all the producers were like you can't go, gotta go to Hollywood like all this stuff's gonna happen like you're gonna be red card all it, like they were promising me all this stuff right Hollywood does mm -hmm. everything does and then and, and I, I couldn't even get drunk that night and I just knew something happened in me that was different and then um, ultimately, I, I, I get on a plane and go to Japan. And that's when my buddy, Jeff Anderson. So what happened? He, he ends up dying. What was the, what was the scenario? What happened? So invite only contest. This is, this is the next day. The, the, like two days later. Yeah. I, I'm like, I'm like jet setting, right? You know, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Too, right? exactly. Got to go to Japan. Got to go to Korea. Got to go to Norway. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. you're uh -huh. like living that life. And so I, I told these uh, producers, I got to go to uh, Japan and I'll come back to Hollywood after this. And uh I go to Japan and uh, invite only. I mean, we got off the plane. You got money. You had a phone. You had a, a girl that, that was your escort or your translator and all yeah. that stuff. I mean, we were rock stars, you yeah. know. And uh, we're we're partying like rock stars. Amazing powder day. And uh, Jeffy ends up coming in. You get twenty of the best snowboarders in the world, and we're all trying to outdo each other. Right? Yeah, we, we're we're invincible. Mm -hmm. You know, I got this world record. You got that. Let's see who, who could do the best, whatever. Drink the most, do the this, yeah. do that. And um, Jeffy ends up coming in and going, hey, guys, watch this. And he goes to slide down a banister on his butt. But it's not any banister. It's like four stories open in the middle. And they're like filming him and all this stuff. And he falls like four stories to his head dead. Oh, my gosh. Like, and the mess, messed up thing, the messed up, the messed up thing is – I, I like didn't even see Jeffy. I saw myself. I because my trademark move is I was gonna outdo you. No matter what, I was gonna outdo you. Yeah. So like that was where I was gonna end up, and that's when God started just being like, enough. You're, I'm I'm pulling you out. Dude, wow. It was wow. so heavy. I was so worked, and I came home. I was messed up, like drugs, alcohol, women. Even though I had a girlfriend, I was that, that, that was kind of like, that was haunting your mind. Oh, dude. I I you know what? Crazy. My mom, even though Roman Catholic. She's a faithful woman. She this woman prays. Yeah. She made me travel with a little Bible. Mm -hmm. So I would I my to stop my mom from nagging me and and I put a Bible in my yeah. thing wherever I went. So what happens when Je Jeffy's dies when I'm in a foreign country when everything's going you wrong? Pull the Bible. Pull the Bible. Out. There's got to be something Amazing. about life and death in this Amazing. thing, right? Like your yeah. story, right? Yeah, I, know. I, I, I I need something, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're in that moment, you're yeah. just like when you, it's, you're just like literally in a place of confusion. Yeah. And uh, you, I mean, you could be in a place where you have everything or you could be in a place where you actually have nothing. But there is confusion that will come into your life one day. Yeah. And you will have that moment. And literally when you go, that's what the Bible is there for. It's 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 the truth. And it has answers to all of life's hardest questions. Yep. And just as you did, I did. It just opened it up. I didn't even know where to read. Honestly, I was like. <laughs> Dude, I remember um, beginning of the New Testament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I started in Matthew, and I was like, "Wait, because it was all the ge genealogy." I'm oh like, gosh, yeah. What? I'm like, I better skip to the next chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe in times Revelations, who knows? But, but um, that God speaks through that stuff, and That's so now cool. here you are. You have your Bible. You pull it out. Yeah. You're reading it in your hotel room. I just, I just remember. I, yeah, I remember there has to be something about life and death. And I went home and I tried to, you know, run into the arms of the girl that I was dating at the time, and she just told me what a mess I was. And I was like, yeah, I know. And she's like, you got to get to church. Like, this girl she doesn't go to church. Go. She doesn't go to church. And I go, okay, let's go. And she's like, no, no, I don't belong there, but you need it. You need church. Yeah, and like, I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> I must be that bad. And, yeah. then I, I, and then I was like, whatever. And I left her house, and I went home. And my neighbor said the exact same thing. Like, it, dead on. Like, you look horrible. And I'm like, and he goes, I think you need to go to church. And this guy was an old dude, cotton top, uh, you know, Calvary Chapel guy. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, dude, I had a crazy life. You just need to meet Jesus. You need to have, he said, you need to have a conversation with dad. Dang. And I was like, all right. So I went into my room and I said, Lord, if you're real, uh, I'll go to church next week. But if not, get the hell out of my life. Okay. And dressed all in black, all pissed off. You okay. sound like head. Head did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, so, he had a black hoodie on. Yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
have hiding in church. All dressed in black. I <laughs> but I did have a tissue. I brought a tissue just in case just God was real. Because I told I I told oh. God I didn't tell anyone else. Oh. I said if you're real, make me cry. Okay. And I go into that church, and that next week I I wept, bro. I like the music start, and I just. And, and to this never, day, yeah. to this day, like I didn't, I didn't cry when I blew my knee, I didn't cry when I landed on rocks, I didn't cry when, all, like all these things, I don't cry. Like yeah. I'm a man. Ooh. Yeah, dude, when I, it, and it still to this day, you've seen me cry. I have. Because when I, I dared God, I said, if you're real, make me cry. And in, in my, how He speaks to me now, it's like God, why do I still cry? He goes, because I'm showing you my glory. And I'm like, oh, like I'm almost gonna lose it right now. Dude, that's because amazing. it's like he, I, I, I asked him. He's a man of his promise, man. Mm-hmm. He will show up and show off over and over again, and his promises are everlasting. And so when I asked him if you're real, make me cry. I cried because he's real, dude. He's so real, and he he'll meet you where you're at. Mm-hmm. And it's heavy, you know it. Mm-hmm. It's so heavy. So I just I rejoice when I cry now because I just see him glimpses of glory. And a lot of you guys are listening right now, and. You might be in that situation right now where you're just empty or maybe you just kind of had enough. Uh, maybe you aren't all, you know, strung out on drugs and alcohol or anything, but you just have that emptiness, you know, yeah. and God wants to fill you. He wants to forgive you and he wants to he wants to make himself known, like yeah. you said. And I would encourage you, like Tom says, just challenge him. Yeah. You know, if you're real, prove that you're real to me. Oh, dude. And we could. He, we, he wants to do it. Right. But what does the scripture says? He says that he knocks on the he knocks stands on the, at the door, knocks. He stands at the door and knocks. Yeah. So, like, think about the visually, okay? So if I go to Tom's house, I knock on the door. Tom's the one that has to open the door. All I can do is knock. And Jesus is constantly knocking on people's hearts, but we're the ones that have to let him in. And a lot of people go, I want Jesus to come in. He's knocking because it says that he knocks, but they never open the door. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So they just got to open the door. And and opening the door, is it's, it's, it's a heart issue. It's like going... Okay, God, if you're real, prove that you're real to me. And you have to literally in your mind truly be, and your heart truly be like, okay, God, I want you to reveal yourself. Not like lip service. You know, we yeah. call it, we're skaters yeah, 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 or snowboarders. Yeah. We call that posers when you're just yeah. saying something, but you don't mean it. Right. When you mean it, you're like, God, prove that you're real and make yourself known. And that's what God did. He, You asked him, make me cry. Yeah, dude. Straight okay. Up. Dude, and I, I, it wasn't crying. I was wailing. It was a, like a, a church of like 200 people up in Tahoe. Mm-hmm. And um, the pastor had to speak up. And I was like, couldn't breathe. You know that cry. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't just cry on no, demand. No, like People no, can't. No. I, I can't just start crying. No. But you're like, dude, wh- I'm wailing. Wham. Like, I'm like, ah! <laughs> And like the pastor speaks up, people are looking back, like wondering what, who I killed. Like, yeah. like you know, like they're like, "What up?" And after that church service, people walked up, "How can we pray for you?" And I'm like, "I'm out. I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm done." Because I had to deal with it. Yeah. Like I was just like, yeah. "I asked you to show up. You did." And then that was ultimately, I said, "Oh, dude, here. This is my life. These are my hopes and my dreams, my fears and my failures. My my dream has become a nightmare. Make sense of it." Mm-hmm. And I just gave him my life right there. So with that said, because we're gonna be going to break in a minute, um, yeah. So here you are. You, you actually succeeded in, in conquering your, your dreams, mm-hmm. success and all that. Yeah. But yet still, because like we were talking about before, Satan likes to just distract people. Yeah. He likes to get you off, off target, off focus. He studies you. Yeah. And he knows what will affect you and how he could sucker you in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and we've talked about this before. Satan is a fisherman. Is too. Jesus called us to be fishermen as Christians. Absolutely. To go fish for men. But Satan is also... Uh, a very good fisherman. Yeah. Um, and he basically, he wants to hook you, he wants to distract you. Yeah. And here you are, you had everything, but you still weren't happy. Yeah. You asked God to reveal himself. He did. He, I don't want, we don't want to get into the transformation yet because we haven't yeah. got to that story. Right, right, right. But the bottom line is God is real. You asked him to reveal himself. He did. Yeah. And that's basically where we're going to end till we come back from the break. Absolutely. Um, go to the com. Check it out. We have uh, we have a film, the Whosoever's Killed the Noise Tour. It's a it's a documentary film. We have a new film coming out. We have products that support um, the movement. You could donate. We tour schools. We're doing skate parks right now. We're currently. I don't know if you if I see yeah, the flyer. Absolutely. We're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna, gonna destroy tour California. California. Yeah. You're in Northern California. Oh, we're going. I'm coming. So we're just gonna we're gonna no. basically just sandwich it from the bottom and the top to the top yeah. where you guys are at, and we're just gonna hit all the skate parks. We're gonna bring the gospel like we always do, um, and we're seeing. Dude, I mean, I guess we'd say thousands of kids get no, saved. Thousands. I mean, just just the time I've been with you, the yeah. two tours. I mean, we've spoken over twenty five hundred students, maybe three thousand yeah. students, and like you, hundreds upon hundreds. Yeah. are going. Yeah, yeah, that's me. So I, it's I happening. Yeah. So uh, join us. Uh, not only uh, financially, financial is always good, but pray because 
See, God owns everything. So pray that God will continue to open doors. And he's the one that has the keys to every door in this universe. So pray that he will continue to move and open doors for us. And I'll talk to you guys in two minutes after the break. More of The Ryan Reese Show coming up. Post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. Now, back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. All right, I got Tom Gillis in the studio. Right before the break, he was just talking about his story about how he grew up Roman Catholic. Yep. He would go and lie to the priest about his sins because he didn't want to tell him the real sins, which I think is epic. <laughs> um, anyway, God, you had some sort of God in your life. Yeah. When I say that, it was like it was a thought. Yeah. Um, but it never had any impact. There was no relationship. You went after your dreams. You became a pro snowboarder. Actually, you have the world record for the highest drop in off of a, a crane into a, a uh, into a huge quarter yeah, pipe. Bomb drop, yeah. Bomb yeah. drop. Yeah. And uh, you, you have first, some other world first, records. First uh, snowboarder to do the loop. Tony Hawk was the first guy. You to do were the it. first one to do the yeah, loop. I was the first one to do the loop. That's something to brag about. Yeah, 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 for sure. That is sick. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to brag, but you know what? That's worth bragging. That was that, that, that was pretty crazy, that dude. That's nuts. Yeah. What year was that's that? That's a whole. That's like 2001, 2002, something right around Dude, there. Dude, I'm so glad we yeah. actually uh, started talking about that right now. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. When did a Hawk do the loop? Tony Hawk. Yeah, it was right around there. Same time. Like, so same time. So like he did it. He did it like a couple months before, and I had a crazy friend, Kurt Heine, who was uh, his his movie company was called Straight Jacket Films. He called me up and said, "Hey, which way would you want to do it, front side or back side?" And I was like thinking about it. I was like, I think I want to do it front side, and then. He's like, all right, we'll, we'll come up. We're going to build it. And we had to figure out how to build it. Yeah. And the first one collapsed and buried like three or four people. And one no person way. broke their neck. And we had to drive. It was bad. It, Whoa. Like, th that's a whole other story. But then, and then the second time we put uh, metal I-beams in the ceiling so it wouldn't collapse. Right, right. And uh, about the fifth try, I pulled all the mats out. We had these gymnastic mats. And y like the funny thing is you think, oh, just go fast. But the faster you go, the more Gs. And you, right. you lay to the ceiling. Like you get G'd out and you're like laying right. on the ceiling. Like so it's just slow and you, steady. Like, like pump through it. Pump through it. You gotta you gotta like just totally see it and pump through it. And Whoa, that's nice. Yeah, so it did that. And, and the rad thing is was no iPhones. It was like maybe you had a, a block you had a Nokia block, right? Uh, I know Nokia. But yeah. but uh dude, I had people calling me from Europe. 
because it's like, dude, I remember where I was when I heard that you did that. Like that, like the world. Oh yeah, like, no, that's it was a like huge it was a huge deal. deal. No, yeah. that's I huge. remember Kira Dillon was in Europe, and he's like, dude, I knew exactly where I was when I heard that. You no, that was a yeah. that was a huge, huge huge thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one was doing. No one did it. Yeah. All right. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So that happened. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, is you ended up finding God. You yeah. At the end of yourself, you gave your life to God. Yeah. You said, God, I'm gonna go to church if you're real. Make me cry. Yeah. And I didn't tell anyone. And you didn't tell anyone. And you show up. Wept. In black. Yeah. Pissed. Pissed. Like, I would have, if you would have talked to me, I would have ripped off your head. Like, I was so angry. Yeah. And yet, God just was like, bink. And then he just you're, came in and softened your heart. Oh, dude. Got you. And then, okay. So now there's a lot of people that are listening to this show now that maybe are in the process of giving their life to God. Maybe they just gave their life to God. Maybe they've, you know, come you know, have a past of addiction, drugs, cutting, yeah. suicide, um, hopelessness, doubt, fear. I mean, you name it. Hey, we've all been had there. one or the yeah. other, yeah. been there, done that yeah. of some sort. And yeah. um, that's okay. God is in the business of uh, transforming lives. Yeah. But what was the process? Okay, did you hear? Did yeah. you give your life to God and everything was just okay? Uh, no. I mean, so some things, I mean, so check this out. I yeah. smoked weed every day for seven years okay. and like bong hit and, uh, shots of espresso was my, you know, hippie speedball in the morning, right. go out and ride pal. And then, um, so I smoked weed every day and he took that r away from me. Like he just, just, just you're done. Like that happened to me. And, and then, um, I was pretty, I was a sex addict. Like mm -hmm. was, yeah. Well, that was, that was hard to, uh, was that hard to break? Uh, you know what? Cause it's natural. Cer certain aspects of it were yeah, like, yeah. I ended up breaking up with the girl and I ended up going celibate for a year, Yeah, but I was still like pornography. Porn? Uh, por porn was definitely there. Yeah. yeah. But then that was gone. Like, so it was, it was weird. Cause it was like almost like, uh, this battle. Like when I was in the word, uh, there was no problems. Yeah. But as soon as I, uh, I missed a day or two porn. right back. Yeah. Like it was totally. this battle between yep. flesh and Every, like I was, it was, it, it, but the, the, so the reason, those of you that are going through that, yeah. that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Yeah. You, you gotta be in the word, man. You got in, accountability. Like I didn't really have accountability. I didn't. So there's all these things that I didn't know about and what you don't know, you don't know. And they yeah. end up hurting you. And, and like, so, and this is how I can tell you that God is real is that I was dyslexic. Uh, I got held back in first grade, couldn't read, was super embarrassed, uh, all this stuff, had to ride the short bus, was special LD. All, I struggled mightily. Words jumped around all the time. Th and God healed me of that. Like straight up, like I didn't read for probably 12 to 15 years because I was so embarrassed. Like, I, and that's probably why I smoked weed and that's why I did all these other things. It was burying what was down deep. And I got saved and I could read the Bible out loud. Like and I could have a Bible and I could have a regular book. The Bible I could read out loud, like no problem. And then I'd go to the book and I would stumble again. And that's why I'd, I'd do that for like a testimony. I'd be like, this is how I know God is real. Watch this. And I'd just be like, so I, I ended up, um, so all these things got taken away, but then there were some other things that, you know, like almost like God heals you, but then you walk back into some things. Mm -hmm. And I did, I mean, I didn't even know like that I was addicted to porn. I didn't even know I was addicted to certain things. Right. And, um, it like God reveals it over time. And I think, you know, as he took away weed and he took away girls and he took away this, I was still filled with joy. I was good, but then I wanted, I didn't want people to think I was weird. So I would like try to like drink with people or I would try to do stuff, yeah. you know, so I didn't want to be weird, but what was weird is like my joy was gone when I would do that. Yeah. So like, I was like, it's almost like you, you're, you're bypassing the glory and like the joy for like just to fit in. And mm -hmm. that was a struggle probably for a couple more years. So I have a new book coming out. Yeah. It's and gonna be sick. that chapter is called identity crisis. Oh yeah. 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 Because it's funny that you say that because, um, there's, you just said right before all this, you said there's stuff that you, you didn't know accountability. Yeah. You know, uh, there's just uh, several things that yeah. no one tells you about. Discipleship, d discipline, like all this yeah, stuff. But right? It's just these basic <clears throat> fundamentals that you need to know to to live a Christian life. Absolutely. And yeah, identity crisis. You are yeah. basically going through an identity crisis. You are who you were. Yeah. But then you have this new life and you were trying to figure out how it all worked and no one explained it to you. No one. Nothing. So you're, no, you're, check this out. Check this out. Yeah. This is even better. So I would normally go to the bars, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. And um, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I had to do something. And I remember uh, calling this pastor and being like, hey, can I get keys to the church? And he's like, what? And I'm like, well, I, 
I got to do something on Friday night. I got to do something on Saturday night. Like, and I can't stay in my house because there's a ton. I, I, I had five other guy friends, right, in this house that I bought. But, like, everyone had a room. And there was porn. There was drinking. There was women. Like, so I, I couldn't be at my house. And I couldn't be at the bars. So I, I ended up talking him into giving me keys to the church so I could open it up. And he's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, read the Bible. I was like, it says in the Bible, it says the word of God doesn't come back void. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to read the Bible and invite people. And so sure enough, I, 10 people showed up, then 15. And all of a sudden I had like 30 people. And I'm like reading through the first, uh, the book of uh, Babylonians and second hallucinations. Cause I don't know anything <laughs> like, like, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, G -g 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 I was like but I'm just reading it. Cause uh -huh. I'm like, and I'm like, can you believe this? this? This is the word of God. This is real. I don't, I don't even know what it means, but it's real. <laughs> and so they were like, you need discipleship. And that's the first word. I was like, what's that? And like, yeah. you know, like, you know, yeah. just teaching. You need teaching. Yeah. That's all that is. What city was that? That was, uh, what, what? yeah, that was uh, Truckee, California. Back. Okay. Okay. So you're in California at yeah. this point. Yeah. Okay. So yes. And this is very important. You know what? You can go to church, just different churches, get in a church that, that teaches the word. Yeah. Genesis, the revelations. It doesn't manipulate it. They take it for face value. And in there, they have these discipleship classes or new, they call them new believer classes yeah. or whatever it is. And they will help you because life will be a lot easier. Yeah. Um, if you, if you kind of, if you get that, I know I had, I had yeah. Sonny around me. I had head around me. Yeah. I had, I had like different dudes, Sean McKee and I had different guys around me that I'd be bouncing things off of or, or I'd be like, yeah, I'm kind of struggling with this or whatever. Oh yeah. I used to deal with that. I did this and this, you know, it's yeah. just that, that's that well, discipleship. Well, we all have questions. Like, questions. like we, we're new, right? Like he says, we're a new creation. Yep. And, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, what do I do? And it, if you're not going to ask a friend or ask someone else that's been through this, you're going to be like, you're going to ask uh, someone else in alcohol or someone else no. in, in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what do I do? And they're like, Oh, that's stupid. Do this. Yeah. And, Every, misery loves company, so yeah, they just absolutely. want to lead you down that road again. So, so as you're going through this cleanup process, yeah. Okay, this is the big question. So, so, you give your life to God. Yeah. When did you? You already know He's real. We already discussed that. Yeah. But when did you find your call in life, and what is your call? Because that's something yeah. that a lot of people they don't know. Right. Like, what am I? Okay, I'm a Christian. Okay, cool. I got forgiven of my sins. I dealt with, you know, yeah. God's, the Holy Spirit has dealt with, uh, you know, a lot of the no. sin in my life. Yeah. Um, but what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do? So I've been a Christian for 17 years. And I, I think for, I would say 12 to fi 12 years, like I was just walking along and just trying to do what everyone else was doing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really feel a call per se. It was just like, oh, be good and go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But then I started getting frustrated. About five years ago, I got really, really frustrated. And I was frustrated with the church because I was reading the word. And I was like, this doesn't look the same. And um, I heard someone say, if you're going to complain, complain to someone that can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And so I went to God and I was like, I'm so angry. Like, why is this? And why is that? And so I just said to God, I was like, <laughs> again, dare, don't, don't dare God unless you really want him to show up. But like, I, I was like, I'm going to come and I, I hiked around my church every day for four months, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. I was at that church. I was walking around angry. like, And I was just like calling out. I was like, Lord, I want to see you. I want to see angels. I want to see demons. I want to hear you. I want to, you know, and I heard this old lady once say, like, if you want to hear God speak audibly, read the Bible out loud. Like, that's what you got to do. That's great. And uh, so anyways, I would read the word. I would sing. I would worship. And that dude, God met me there. And God said, like, told me things that I was just like, what? Like, like as you and I are having a conversation, God is speaking. And I, my wife's like, why are you, why do you keep going up to the church? And I'm like, dude, he meets me there. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, meets me there. And he was telling me things about, Tom, you're going to be a tabernacle, not a temple. And I was like, what's the difference? And he's like, go look in the Bible. And mm -hmm. so you look in the Bible. Oh, tabernacle travels. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's part of my calling. That's part of what you, you set me up that you're going to travel. Okay, Lord. And then, then he was like, he goes, uh, one, he said, don't you dare call my bride ugly. And I was like, ooh, because I was angry with the church, mm -hmm. right? So I was like, okay, if someone called my wife ugly, I'm going to fight him. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I got you on that one. I got that, God. And then he, the second thing he said, Tom, if you're unwilling to change in any one area, um, you're not all in, and I'm going to wait till you're all in. And I was like, oh. So everything needs to be on the table. Like, here's my life. Here's my dreams. Here's my hopes. Do whatever. Here's my gifts, my abilities. Take it. Do what you're going to do. So that was number two. And then number three, he said uh, El, Shad El Shabab. 
Oh, like what's Al-Shabaab? Yeah, what is Al-Shabaab? It is, uh, it is the terrorist organization in Somalia. And I found this out that it, it stands for the youth. And it says, what are you doing for the youth? He goes, what are you doing for the kids, that next generation? How are you pouring into them? And I just was like, oh, all right, that's, that's my heart. Like, I'm going to pour into that next generation. Like, so I started working with a school called Thrive School at Bayside Church and pouring in the next generation of leaders. And uh, they take, um, they take any college-age kids, uh, juniors and seniors, and they, like, disciple them. They train them. Like, whether they're going to be in business or whether they're going to be in ministry, they, like, and I started hanging out with these kids, and I would watch them come in, be like young kids, and then be like confident, yeah, leaders. And being I was like, yeah. yeah, they were being discipled, and I was getting discipled, and I was taking them to Nicaragua, and all this stuff started happening when I started like saying it's all it's all on the table, and started pouring into the next generation. Like, and he, the crazy thing, Ryan, is I I then prayed for forty days that mm-hmm. God would show up. And do something different because I was like in construction, flipping houses, successful, but like didn't really know what was happening in my life and wasn't totally content, kind of like soul drain. Mm-hmm. And uh, I prayed with a buddy for 40 days that God would um, do something different. And on day 40, uh, a big radio station called me and asked me if I wanted to go do school assemblies. And then I started doing schools. It's like just like God, God is all around us and he is speaking to us, but few of us are listening Mm -hmm. and it's when you put in the time and when you keep seeking out like you don't give up you just don't ask and be like oh you're not going to ask me well i don't want to talk to you then like i want to add something yeah go it just you gotta you're saying a lot of good stuff here yeah Um, going back to what you said about that lady that says if you want to hear god's voice read the bible out loud yeah and people may say well how do i hear how do i get directions from god or how do i hear and i would encourage them that it's, it's by hearing the word of God. It's like listening to Bible studies. Yeah. They're reading the scriptures, they're breaking it down. And then God, through the work of the Holy Spirit, gives these pastors these words of knowledge or, or, or words of wisdom or, yeah. or just insight on people's life that comes out of that airwave. Yeah. Or whatever, if you're watching a YouTube or streaming podcast or whatever, however you're watching the dang screen. <laughs> yeah. Um, or audio. You're um, listening. It's you're the listening. word of God. Yeah. It's because, you know, I've been going through just. Right now, I'm in a in a in a in a interesting place in my life where more of like as in I'm just waiting to hear the direction, like what's next. Yeah, like you, you know when you were like, oh yeah, God, I want something new. Yeah, forty eight prayer. Like yeah. I feel like I'm in that position right now yeah. where I'm like, God, like I feel like I'm just waiting for something. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know what it is, yeah. but I'm like, I just want something new. Right. So what am I doing? I'm just listening to studies after studies. Yeah. I'm I'm. Right now, it's, I'm not really reading that much. I'm just more of like listening to audio Bible. Yeah, no, absolutely. Or are you, are you uh, doing, or driving because uh, yeah. just my the way my yeah the way my situation's set up right now. But it's the word of God. It's reading the Bible to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter audio, video, Bible studies, vi- you know, whatever. No, it here, is. It, here it is. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Word of God in, word of God out. Yeah. It, so so with that yeah. though, God's speaking to me. Oh my gosh. Dude, I, I literally feel like I've been listening to Bible studies, yeah. like these like radio shows, or I have different, like Tony Evans, I listen yeah. to the brother from Texas, and yeah. different people. Yeah, I do through the word, yeah. And, and, and dude, I feel like every study is just like, bam, 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 bam. God just speaks. It's, it's like he's just downloading like paragraphs. Well, I, even when we go out with the whosoever's, like whether Christina's talking, you're talking, Sonny, mm-hmm. me, whatever, yeah. like you, people will come up and be like, dude, thank you for saying that. And you're like, did I say that? Yeah. Like, I don't even know if I said that. Exactly. So I think... God can use anything and anyone, and like the Holy Spirit, super important um, to 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 be able to zone in. Because I, like I said, I think uh, He's speaking constantly, but very few people are listening or knew how to tune in. Like if you were on the radio and you didn't have your mm-hmm. dial tuned into the radio, it'd be all staticky. I think that's why people are like, ah, I can't hear God; it's all staticky. I'm like, tune well, in. They're, they're not, yeah, well, tune in. Like literally, so there's two kinds of tune ins that you're talking about here. Right. You got the kind that people aren't even like turning on yeah. like to, yeah, 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 yeah. like turn on would be like open the bible and read it yeah read absolutely. a devotion turn on the radio yeah so that's one kind of tune in and yeah. then the other tune in is you could be tuned in yeah reading but your mind's not even there yeah yeah you're like thinking the, about your grocery list you're exactly about this. you're, you're, you're like, gone with yeah. the wind yeah. Yeah. yeah you're tuned in but not tuned in yeah people aren't tuned in well and, and i think too like because it's there he's speaking well when we were saying about discipleship and stuff you have to ask like i i remember specifically god saying what do you want and i was like I just want to make you happy. Like, you know, like that was the right answer. Like, you know, but he was like, I'll wait. And I was like, what are you waiting for? He's like, I'll wait until you know what you want. 
Because people can't tell you what they want. They can tell you what they don't want. Mm. Dude, five years ago, I said, God, I, I want to uh, be a motivational speaker. I want to do all this stuff like this for you, for your glory. It was until I said those things, like God was just, oh, wait. Mm. Like, tell me what you want. Mm. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and like the waitress came up and said, what do you want? And you just said, oh, just something to make me happy. Like she's like, all right, hon, I'll come back when you're ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think God wants you to own it. Like, and, and, and you have, he plays don't the you desires th- in your heart. You just took the words out of I was literally just going to say, I was literally just going to say that. This is the thing. The Bible says he gives you the desires of your heart. Yeah. What he's doing is he's giving you those desires. Yeah. But he wants you to activate in faith and step out and be yeah. like, because if you're in the word and you're in tune with God and you're tuned in. Yeah. The word of God's coming in. He's speaking. The word of God's going to come out. He's want, you're going to basically just, what's going to come out of your heart is what he's putting there. Those desires. Yep. Yeah. And sometimes you could, that's the part of the step of faith is stepping out exactly. and saying, this is what I feel called. I, cause I remember like being called to like speak. Yeah. I would, I'm like, I, I had these desires to speak, but I'm like, I don't want to speak. Yeah. But I had these desires. Yes. But then I knew, but then once I started speaking and I saw the, 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 the reaction of, um, the, or the response of people getting saved. Yes. One person getting saved. You're like, wait a minute. I just told my story. Yeah. And I'm fumbling and I'm terrified. And someone just came forward and said, I want to give my life to Jesus. And they're crying. And it's like the real, you're like, dude, that is so gnarly. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. So anyway. And I think, I think you always have to go back to God, like wherever you're at, like I know you're in the season. And even when someone, Dave told me to call you, like I was all like, no, I don't want to call a dude just to hang out with a dude. Like I don't, I, it, Lord, if you want me to call him, I'll call him. But I'm not gonna like, you know, call him just to like be bro. I don't need more bros, yeah. you know. And it was like God. I kept praying that. And on day two, I was like, Lord, am I supposed to call Ryan Reese? And he's like, Call him. And we we, we like, hey. And it was on. No. <laughs> it was like it was no. like, oh dude, we would have been hi- friends in high school. We would have like, yeah. we're still, I'm like, I I consider you my brother. Like yeah. we're just like we met. And we're like, oh yeah, we're good. Yeah, like, it's on. Exactly. There's no questions. It's true. So and that's what happens. You listen to God, stepped out by faith, yeah. and he shows up. And then Yeah, and he keeps and I think that's what we have to do. It's like, Lord, is this of you? Like you keep asking. Like, yeah. cause it's not just like, you know, again, if you have a relationship with a, a girl or with a bro or whatnot, you keep asking questions. Yeah. Like, cause you want to know more. Yeah. And that's why it's got and, the same. And God, way. The thing what I've learned about God is um, you know, he doesn't it's, he doesn't keep you in the same thing. No. He always he's always moving. He's he's moving things around. He takes you to certain places and with certain people for certain seasons. Yeah. You grow, you iron sharpens iron. Yes. You develop. You're you're maybe you're rubbing off on them, but it's basically it's iron sharpens iron. You're always like sharpening each other one way or another. That's the way life works. Yeah. But then all of a sudden he wants to move you. And and if you're not asking them, like you're saying, or hearing from him, you could get stuck in a place that maybe start off to be the right place. But now it's not like Chuck say, Smith would say. I always use this quote. There's, what's the difference between a rut and a grave? It's only the depth and the width. Like, yeah, so good. you could be that's stuck yeah. in a rut or a grave. <laughs> well, and a blessing can turn into a curse. Yeah, if you well, stay well, there. Well, if, you're, you, if you're supposed to move. Well, that's just it. Like, yeah. I've seen plenty of people that like, okay, God gives them a ministry. God gives them something. And they hold on to it so tight. They start worshiping that instead mm. of worshiping him. And then like, you're just like, what's off here. Yeah. And I, I had the same thing, dude. What door got opened uh, three years ago where I was traveling the nation, speaking to all these kids closed. Yeah. And I wanted to be like, Lord, why'd you open that door? What was that? And he goes, I, w- I wanted you to learn this. And, and then, why, and why'd you close it? And why'd you close it? And I'm like, I need you to teach you this. And you I, wanted hold to sh- on. I wanted to show you that if you're either going to follow, me and be obedient or you're going to get stuck in things and i was like i don't want to be stuck in anything so think about (laughs) this with with that said it's interesting because when we when i first started the move whosoever's we were we were touring speaking to churches yeah then we immediately went to like large-scale music festivals like twenty thousand people yeah we were doing those for like four years but then there was a shift gotcha when we started touring more of the schools and stuff like that and i was like but god i've been doing music festivals even back when i was at circa and even before that yeah for years like you know, and, and that's like the wow. That's yeah. like you know, twenty thousand people. Yeah, all the biggest bands. You got the militia. You got the skate. You got this art. I mean, it's just like party time, right? Yeah, and just sick of it, right? Yeah. But and I'm like, but wait, God, but but that's huge. So many people, but really, if you think about it, 
it was it was well first of all COVID, so everything shut down for years. Yeah. So music festivals don't exist. He prepared yeah. us for that. Yeah. But then on top of it, so say you get fifteen thousand to twenty thousand people, okay? Yeah. At the event. Now you look at the music festival. Say like, because we we are Christians, we have some kind of a Christian following. Let's say, uh, you know, you say, you know, twenty percent of them are Christian, and then you go, well, how many of them are from like fifty years old to to twenty one year olds? Then how many are the non Christian kids that we actually want to reach? And you go from twenty thousand, you narrow it all down, you might end up with like five thousand high school students or something. Right. Now think about what we've done. We've hit like 90, uh, you know, we've, we, we've, we've probably seen over 100,000 kids give their life to the Lord just in the last four years. Yeah. That's more than all the music festivals. Right. And these are like in public schools, non-Christian kids. These aren't right. church kids. Right, 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 right. So right. what God did is like, look at this is cool. We're going to use this for this season. Yes. And this is going to be impactful for this time. Yes. But what's going to happen is what I see in the future all this stuff's going to get shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to get you guys rolling now so you can actually impact non-Christians around the world. Yeah. And you don't have to spend $500,000 on a music festival right. when you could go into the school and spend $1,000, and most of it's for pizza. Well, exactly. <laughs> and, and I can just tell you, again, that's the same story because I, I was here, I was doing all these schools and traveling. I traveled with my whole family, and all of a sudden COVID shuts everything down. And what happens is church steps up and goes, hey, we're planting church down in uh, uh, Bayside OC. See down yep. down in Newport. Will you help do that? And I'm like, yeah. And, and it was like, is. and and, you, and yep. then it was you and I. And I'm like, what? God already knew all he this had stuff. To move was, you down here, dude. Seriously, exactly. It's just crazy. So like, God is outside of time, and we always ask God, why are you not on time? And then he uh, he knows he shows up perfectly. And going back to what you said is that now here you are. If you were like your schools was like your God, and like yeah. I got to do this, you would be home right now with no ministry. Yeah, because schools are shut down. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's even what happened. And now uh, you're here. That's even what happened with us. Yeah. Schools got shut down, but we're like, oh, skate parks are open. Yeah. So we'll just keep moving. Yep. And God's like, guess what? There's skate parks all over the world. Yeah. And they're wide open. <laughs> and you could get just as many kids at a skate park as you can right. as an assembly. Exactly. And probably more <laughs> kids will give their life because of that. They they, they, they you relate to them. You're yeah. like you're skate. We're skating together. I know. Like we're just like. Oh, it's the best. It's so it's, rad. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> we all right. Well, hey, we stories. got about a minute left. Um, um, yeah. Any last words to the people listening? Man, I just if if you're if you're in that place of hurt, if you're in that place of you're a believer but you don't really know, I, I would just encourage you to get discipled. Like it, like all disciple means is being taught. Like get into the word, get taught. And you know what? If if you're a senior, junior, or college age, and you're looking for a place to get discipled and get raised up, Thrive School is an amazing opportunity. How do they find it? Where's it at? Do thriveschool.com, and, and you'll go to it, get information, sign up. And honestly, like we're just trying to crank out the next generation of leaders because we have a moral collapse in this country, and we need you we need you. We need Heck you. Heck yeah. Stop well, up. that's Tom Gillis. You can see him on Instagram. Go to the Whosoever's or mine. You could track him down through there. He's in our new film coming out. Yep, yep. Go to the Whosoever's.com. Get the products, rep, donate, fund the mission, and keep us in prayer. We love you guys. Talk to you guys next Saturday. Peace. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.